Hello, everybody. This is Shannon with Beads and Babble with another segment in our mini series about jump ring making. Today, we're going to focus on triangular jump rings. The process is the same, technique is the same as the previous videos, but just different types of mandrels in order to achieve the triangular shape. I'm going to go over the supplies I'll be using today. Um, some of them you will not need, but I have them, so I wanted to kind of bring them out, show you. Of course, it's always handy to have some kind of measuring device. You'll need a still bench block. If you don't have a still bench block uh, in a pinch, uh, two regular wood blocks will do. A nylon mallet. Some flush cutters. pair of pliers uh, can be two bent nose, whichever ones you have. These are for opening, closing the jump ring. I have a chain nose and a bent nose here. We'll be working with 16 gauge and 18 gauge copper wire. This is a copper core wire with a uh, silver plating, like a craft wire. I'll be using uh, these particular paintbrush handles to get that triangular shape which I've had these for a while. I use them regularly. This is a tool that I've had and I do use. Um, Beadsmith makes it. Um, it is a tapered jaw triangular plier. Um, great for all kinds of um, uses in jewelry like bell making, jump ring making. But keep in mind that this is a tapered barrel so you will not get consistent jump rings all the way down. But it does mark the area on the pliers and how big it is so it you can get that you know this much here is six millimeters and these are millimeter markings so it goes from two millimeter all the way up to eight millimeter see both sides of it here glare from my light there the smaller and um Definitely, um, they have them in round, rectangular, square, uh, so they have them in several different shapes. And they are actually, if you are really into your jewelry making and want to make an investment, not a bad option. And these will be the jump rings we'll be constructing today using the wire and these tools. So we'll first start out with the pliers because preferably steel is uh, the best mandrel for um, forming metal. Um, you do not want to use any soft material like wood. Um, these are hard plastic, but still the wire does bite into it a little bit. So you got to be careful when you're winding on uh, even this type of hard plastic. The um, coil will get stuck on there and when you're trying to get it off, it will deform the coil and ruining the, um, the shape you're going for. So I'm going to start off with this 16 gauge silver plated copper core wire. I'll start here um, at the um, six. We'll do a six because six is a nice size for a jump ring. And that would be the inner diameter of the jump ring. I'm going to fold it where it has a little bit of a tell thing off and I'm lining it up on the line here. So this is where you're going to get the consistent six. So you won't get a ton of, you won't get a long, long coil here, but a decent one. And I have the pliers in my right dominant hand and the wire in my non-dominant hand. It just works better. And you will have to rotate the pliers as you're winding this. And then you'll go consistently until you get out of the markings for the six millimeter here. And I keep pressure, so the jaw of the pressure is keeping that wire flat as I'm winding. And I'm just moving down the barrel, pushing down as I'm doing it to keep that shape crisp, keeping it lined up so we're not getting outside of the six millimeter. I think I can go one more here. Oops. 
All right. So I got about four. I'll cut some of these loose. And you can do that on all the sizes on the plier. Bring in my flush cutters. And I'm going to cut two flush ends. And keep in mind, like always, you're going to lose some material when you're flush cutting because you have to um, cut the um, pinched ends off of both sides. Or So now I'll have a pinched in here, which I'll have to cut. So you're going to lose material. But if you have a jeweler saw and... This is great practice to get better at sawing. Um, you can saw through this whole coil con with a consistent, um, so you get consistent ends, flush ends on both sides. But it, it there's a little bit of a, it's a challenge to do that, especially with these odd shaped jump rings. Round jump rings, no problem. So I'm going to bring in the pliers so I can open and close these. This is a thicker gauge wire. Sometimes I can do it with my um, fingers. Sometimes I can't. And if you get a little bit of deformity in the shape, you can bring these back in and push down a little bit. Go to the opposite side. Push that down. And then you can walk it in little bit of a challenge these different shaped ones get there this takes a little bit of manipulation which metal is nice that it does allow for that off the coil here and then close these Sorry, am I having breathing here? Didn't sleep well last night. My doggies were very disruptive last night. I don't know why. I think the wind was blowing and they kept hearing everything. And wind was blowing, you know, making sounds, I guess. And they thought they needed to bark at every little thing. So I'm going to bring in my bench block and one of the wood blocks to flatten these out so I can... a consistent shape on those so now those are the uh, triangular jump rings as you can say they're they're not perfect but they do have the triangular shape but when you're working with winding hand tools and stuff like that you're gonna you're gonna have um, you know not as sharp of corners and such but that's all the beauty of one of the beauties of making handmade stuff alrighty and then now I'm gonna bring in the paintbrush handles and I'm going to use a 18 gauge wire and you'll what you'll want to do too is uh, depending on the diameter of the jump ring you're going for you're going to want if it's smaller diameter you can work with smaller wire if it's bigger diameter you'll want to bump up to larger gauge wire now with this technique I'm going to put the um, mandrel in my left non-dominant the wire in my right dominant hand and I'm going to keep a little bit of a tail out. It's same technique as before with the other videos. And I'm going to use my fingers to push it along the mandrel. And I'm going to turn with this one just because the shape. And a little bit. I'm not going to wind the wire. I'm just going to walk it around the mandrel with my fingers here. At least for the first two. Possibly the rest. So, and then I'm going to work it down a little bit closer to the end because, as I said, this does bite into this plastic a little bit and I want to be able to slide it off easily. So I'm turning and push, I'm turning the mandrel with my left hand and pushing down the wire with my right hand. I can still get this off. <laughs> Testing as I'm going. So I know that the wire, because the more wraps you get around here, the more it's going to constrict uh, tighter against the mandrel be more uh, difficult to get off without having issues and I can already feel that happening so I'm going to slide it off before I get too far I'm just working it down a little bit okay. 
this does not go flying here. I'm trying to do it gently. And I'm just rocking it back and forth to get it off the mandrel here. And this is what I'm talking about with um, softer materials when you're winding softer materials. Oop. <laughs> Knew it was going to do that. Um, so there you have it. I'll cut some of these off too. Just keep testing, especially if you're using a softer mandrel. Just keep testing to make sure it's not binding on the mandrel. Because it will. Especially if the mandrel is softer than the wire that you're wrapping around it. But as I said, I think it's important for you to see in real time how all, you know, it's not perfect. I mean, you can edit these videos and make it look like everything's perfect, but in all in all, that's not reality. So I like you to see even my struggles as I do this. And my hand strength isn't what it used to be, I'll tell you. So there are the triangular jump rings using a consistent sized, and as you can see it, you know, it bites into that plastic quite a bit. Um, and that's only 18 gauge wire. So, um, you know, and then you can bring in the bench block, the metal bench block and the wooden blocks and do the same thing. It'll work harden these uh, jump rings and flatten them too. Those up there, or actually I'll let you guys see them, and then I'll slide them up there. And then I'm going to use the bigger um, barreled paintbrush and wrap with a 16-gauge wire. I'll use a shorter one because I'm not going to wrap it, wrap it too many times around here so I don't bind it. Using the same uh, wrapping technique, I'm just pushing, holding, and pushing, turning the mandrel. Crossing that first section. The same. As, it, as you go, it gets easier. The more coils you get, the easier it is. So you don't get too many just because the fact that that's not a steel mandrel. If that was a steel mandrel, it'd slip right off. Flush ends here. Flipping the flush cutter so you're getting flush cuts on both sides of the jump ring. Excess over there. Now you can, those are just hand um, wound around the mandrel. So you're not going to get the sharp corners, but you get the basic shape, which is nice. Now, this is a coil I did earlier using the 16-gauge wire and the purple um, paintbrush um, as a mandrel. I'm going to show you how you can kind of tighten up the shape a little bit. I'm just cutting off the excess tails here so I can use the bench block. I'm going to bring in the steel bench block and the mallet. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place the flat edge of the triangle down, and I'm going to hit the points here. Not, not too hard at all. I'm going to do that to both sides, all three sides. Light, very light. It's not a heavy, but it, it will tighten up. I'll cut a few of these so you can see. It'll tighten it up a little bit. I mean, it's not going to make a huge difference, but it will tighten it up a little bit. Makes it a little bit sharper on the the, um, the flat sides. So you can do that. You can put them back up here and kind of work hard. And what's nice about the wood blocks is they don't mar the metal. 
um, and they come in handy. I, I have a bunch, like I use them for uh, flattening bangles and stuff, rings, um, just ring shanks and stuff like that. But that is the basics to um, making a, a triangular jump ring. And you can make it out of smaller gauge. Um, this is 20 gauge. I wouldn't go any smaller than 20 gauge wire uh, when you're constructing um, jump rings. And this is almost kind of cutting it close to the corners. Avoid the corners. Try to stay in the middle if you can, um, like that, because uh, it just weakens the jump ring. That's a potential to pull open a lot easier um, than if you get it in the center there. But that is the basics of jump ring making um, and for triangular jump rings, which is all these um, videos will be the same technique, just using different mandrels to achieve a different shape. Um, and honestly, I would, if you are really getting into making your own jump rings for, uh, you know, constructing your jewelry or making chain out of it, which you would be able to do, um, purchasing some steel mandrels um, for the shapes that you're interested in creating is a is a definite recommendation for me. Um, steel is the best mandrel that you can use, um, or you can purchase just some, some pliers if you're not going to be making gobs of them. A lot of times I'll take a, you know, a little bit of time and just make a bunch. Um, and I have a little container that I put them all in and I mark the gauge and, mo you know, you can park the gauge of it, uh, the diameter of the um, jump ring, inner and outer diameter. So, you know, and you can get to them quickly as you're making jewelry. Um, I'll have one more jump ring um, video to make that'll um, wrap up this series, this mini series. And it'll be textured and, um, uh, excuse me, twisted jump rings. And that will be a little bit more uh, complex. You'll need a little bit different tools and you'll be using a power drill because um, hand winding is just not enough. Um, there's just not enough that you can do with it um, can, to get a consistent coil and one that'll stay together. So I'll be teaching that in, in the next video. But until then, have a great day.